So it's about what three coming? Four. It's about five o'clock already. We're already gonna head to the venue and uh, get ready for this once in a lifetime match. Two-part episode because I know we're going past the regulated limits, but we're gonna call it the Chronicles of Madness, which is the name of my DVD. Ah, look at that! Shameful that, plug. that works itself out so well. <laughs> uh, where we left off, again, um, we're uh, in the valley. We in were the valley, the we had to do the same type of match, and we did. Um, we actually had two matches over there. Yep. One was a one-on-one -on -one matchup. We were the main event. And the second one was a tag team match, which was me and CJ versus you and Virus, I think. Yes. Um, as your tag team partner. And I always like the opportunity to work with him because it still leaves a little point of how far has he came. And the last time that we fought um, earlier this uh, this month of December, um, yeah, uh, it was Good. nice to see that. You know, the you, tribute to Dino. The tribute to Dino show. Yes. We hadn't worked in him what uh, since the Night of Madness. Right. Oh, we did the, no, the we, we did the Pride Festival and then we did Night of Madness. Yeah. And 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 that's one of the things I I opened. Okay, hold up. Before the, before the Pride of Madden, the Pride show, we hadn't worked each other in about a year. Just about yeah. Just about right. a year. We hadn't we we tagged and we talked a lot, but we hadn't physically matched up in about a year and. He invited me to do the Pride Festival again, which I love doing, and as soon as I got there, he's like, it's me and you, and we're going 15, and I was like, awesome. Yeah, we went and 10. We went 10. It was hot as balls. But it, Sorry but it for the reference for that festival, but it was hot as balls. And when he told me that uh, Sal was uh, managing me, I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And when good minds are together, uh, I remember the finish was, I knew I was going to do the job. We didn't, I don't, I don't think we knew exactly how. No. Uh, we just set it up. We just set it up and Sal has the, the tennis racket and again, not even talk, I, we, didn't, we didn't talk that much. No, we didn't. Oh, we, we, we didn't. called it in the ring and I'm, I don't know what the hell he, he hit me with. I think we, we did the superplex and again, the apron was hot as balls <laughs> and I rolled to the corner and I think Sal threw the 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 racket, and this is where just three minds are like on the same page. He he ducks and it led to the finish, and it was just perfect. It was perfect. The timing of everything was perfect. We didn't talk anything out. I we think we minimally talked about it. We just knew. We just touched on a few things. Then we touched on a few things, but the finish was just like uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. And again, I hadn't seen him in about a year, and that it was just. That's that's how no that's how well you work with somebody and again it, it, it helped that I trained with them so I kind of know the sick things that go on ahead and when we're in the ring it syncs up and it happened again of night of madness where where Ray would please your nasty breaking it that match but it was supposed to be uh, title versus title I just want to verify yes that. it was supposed to be me being the Texas wrestling champion of TWA taking on the Laredo. Uh, the LWA champion, but somebody took the belt to fix it for some reason. It still hasn't gotten back. But that's a, a jab for a different story. Um, so that match happened, and that had been a couple months. Um, when was the Pride Festival? That was in July. July. October was the Night of Madness, and again, we hadn't touched each other since, and when we finally got in the ring again, Again, we didn't speak to each other. He was running the mat, the show, so I was like, "Wait, we're gonna do that." He would hand, have to handle other business, and 
again, it was just, it just click, click, click. The, what we had planned up hit perfectly. And from then, from October to December, again, we hadn't wrestled each other and we came to do the, the uh, show for Dino. And I didn't know we were working till the day of. And I was kind of surprised that I even got asked to do that match, let alone got called. Because again, black ball from other play for X amount of reasons. I don't. We, I don't really know the true reasons. I've only speculated. I, I don't. I don't either. And I would like to know the truth about why I was kept away for so long when things could have been things could have just been handled. And it just kind of bothered me that you know we could have just sat down and talked. And talking actually figures out a lot of things. And I mean, it, it all goes back to this feud. It started with you opening the lines of communication. Exactly. With, with Mad One here. This is, yeah, it's true. But afterwards, uh, I think it was, uh, I did a Lucha show down here. And um, I had just got asked, and the next day I, I get a kind of a nasty text. And I didn't think, you know, it kind of bothered me, but. It, 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 in my heart, it kind of sank because TWA is like family. Nobody has an ego, and a lot of the guys that do come in, they're pretty level-headed, and they, you know, they don't, they don't think one's better than the other. Everybody respects each other, and that's what I liked about LWA. And I always thought of them as family, and I truly respected every single thing that they did and that they accomplished in order to get better. You have. Um, you have a lot of young rising stars that are coming up and he's leading the way. He really is leading the way because it's because of him and it's, and, and, and I'm complimenting you that it's because of you that there are a lot of guys that want to step up. Um, even though you have a lot of little knuckleheads that are still there, you have a lot of guys that want to step up that want this, that needs this. You have uh, uh, Michael Autumn who, does have a you know few few years in this, you know. Again, and, I've, and, I've, and I've mentioned he's very underrated. Very underrated. WR does not promote him as I, as much as I think they should. And again, I'm gonna get more heat for that, but I don't care. Spartan, uh, Spartan too. I like the way Spartan works, and he has the physique, and he you know he, he eats has, a lot of uh, sweet uh, potato and turkey. Protein, protein. I thought it was all protein shit. No, 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 no. We've, we've had arguments and he always has that little little thing of ground turkey and cheap potato. Anyways, Spartan. And then there's, here's, the, here's the thing, man. When I was doing my title run, I specifically chose to work with Spartan. You worked quite a bit with Spartan. For, for, for that reason, because we came up exact about around the same time and it's just, he's one of those guys that has something and when it fits together it's on there i've been able to i have not been able to work with my bottom yet i want to you work with them yes a, a lot and the matches are awesome his matches with the uh, spartan and him the uh sons of prometheus are awesome i i dug them i don't like spartan in the short shorts but that's just a personal uh, preference <laughs> i'm glad it's not just me uh, but <laughs> the matches are just Awesome to watch, man, and we do have a lot of young guys coming in. It's an honor that you mentioned that is because of me. I, I, I want to think it's just the product itself. I think we helped set that precedent with that match that we had because, again, before that, we had a lot of gimmicky matches, a lot of uh, Lucha-inspired characters real over the top, and I like to think that we cut that out of the way to make which, it which is nothing legit. inherently wrong okay I, I don't, I don't, I don't you know you have a few lucha you do have a few lucha guys uh texas joe being one of them uh here's the thing lucha guys you can be a good wrestler and still do lucha red dragon is a lucha lord that oh, God. has a great wrestling style and great not build. great build can do fantastic build. wonderful stuff in the ring Again, I'm not being. I like this picture on Facebook. It's always this pose. Yeah, it's always this pose. And if I had his body, I'd, I'd be taking about shots, uh, shots like that too. But I would just wear the blazer with my own shirt too. If I look like that. Oh man! But, uh, but I like I'd do the Shawn Michaels pose if I could do anything. <laughs> yes, I have a picture. Would you like to see it? Ooh, anyways, saucy. anyways, back to because we're making the minions. 
Ace is ready and Ace approves his message. Uh, <coughs> Red Dragon is a luchador that is not gimmicky. He knows his character and he is in tune with actual wrestling. We had a lot of luchadores that were just characters too gimmicky. And but, I wasn't but, a fan. But you went from having guys who were coming down, names that were coming down, to, you know, just to, to do a to do a semi-decent match, to bring in guys, to work with y'all guys, and y'all guys had great matches. Here's, here's the thing, after our match, I was able to work with Robbie E, for those TNA, like, awesome to work with. We've been able to bring down Houston Carson, Cahagas, uh, stop watching, stop searching for dirty stuff. Uh, Cahagas, Barbie Hayden, which is, she's the uh, NWA Women's Champion, uh, Cat Green, uh, Danny Ramones, Cherry Popper, whatever you want to call them, the, the South, the Texas Junior Champion, I mean, the minions getting on my nerves. Uh, we've been able to <laughs> to be able to bring up and coming talent that's making it big. Houston Carson is making it big, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Rudy Russo, we've been able to bring down multiple times. Cahagas, and if you don't know who Cahagas is, there's something wrong with you and start Googling that name. ACH? ACH, F and H, man. Uh, Ring of Honor Superstar. And one of the greatest guys ever. And we're gonna go to pay the f***ing light bill right now because we're just wasting a lot of light. But I'm gonna come back to where we come full circle because of him. Full circle. You know, I started my career back in. Originally, I started my independent wrestling career back in '06. But not many people really know that I used to wrestle a little bit before then. I started off at, as what most people call a yarder, or a yard tart. I ain't gonna lie, yeah, I was. I started as a backyard wrestler. Uh, nothing too, nothing extreme like you see the kids that were doing on those uh, DVDs and stuff like that. That wasn't me. I went out there and just did like 150 spots in one match that lasted over 20, 30 minutes. But, I mean, we all had a passion. We all shared it. As uh, time went on, I met up with Manny Villalobos. Uh, Manny got me started in the basics up until there was a issue about money. And then after that, I went back with my friends, goofing around in the, in the backyard. Well, we did a Halloween show that was merely for the, for the neighborhood. And it caught the eye of a promoter and who would become uh, one of my closest friends, uh, Javier Santana. And from there we, from there we hooked up. He gave us a ring. He helped us with knowledge, and we started growing from there. Uh, of course, uh, during time, a lot of the guys met up with other trainers, such as uh, Virus. Tito uh, Santana. Oh, I'm no, sorry, Tito Sanchez. Should get that right, Tito Sanchez. <laughs> but you know, we all went our separate ways from there, and eventually went off on our own little cliques. I myself took time off uh, due to uh, uh, just due to injury, and just I just needed to get away. During that time away, I grew as an individual. I grew as a person to become better than what I was mentally and physically I mean we all make mistakes in our life and you have to pay for them but despite all that I didn't let it hold me back I triumphed and I kept I kept to my guns proud of everything I've done. Everything. You know, it wasn't until I asked CJ Xavier who could I train with that could make me better. After being told by uh, other people that they wanted to retrain me. I didn't want to get retrained. CJ, knew, CJ didn't want me to get retrained. I just needed things that needed to be tweaked out a little bit and that's when I met 
Kevin Knight. Kevin helped me to get to where I needed to be. I still got a lot to learn. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't know everything. Never, nor did I ever claim that I did. But when it comes down to it, I am confident enough now to say that if you put me in the ring with somebody, anybody, I can have a good match with them. That's how confident I am now. I never had that confidence before. Recently this summer, again, I knew Nate CH from San Antonio, Austin area. Uh, I knew he had worked with uh, TWA. Uh, didn't know Virus and them were his head trainers that broke him in. But I remember he came down and I, it was the day of the Pride Festival. We drove, me and Spartan drove up. We came back down uh, the night before the Urban Fest, our show here, TTK's uh, Urban Fest. We were drinking. I wasn't drinking, but they were hanging out at a bar, and Ace texted me like, hey, come down, me and ACH, and this and the other, and I remember I walked in, and our instant connection was the shoes, he was wearing uh, Jordan, so was I, and he's like, oh, you like shoes, this and the other, he asked me, yeah. I introduced myself, and I go, oh, I go by the name of that one, and he looked at me, and then, oh, whatever, 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 and it came to the uh, conversation of who who helped and I and I name dropped Madness and I name dropped Kevin Knight and we clicked since then he's like oh I know so and so and so and so and so and yeah, they broke me in this, this and the other and from that night on that that, that rest of the night is uh, pretty legendary he did a backflip in the middle of a club started playing football with no ball <laughs> in the middle of the club um, he's a great guy uh, <laughs> He's a great guy, a good friend. Um, recently, I went to San Antonio to go see uh, Ring of Honor, and he could have been like, oh, I don't remember you. He remembered me by name and shook my hand, and it was, it was a great dude. But that was our instant connection to where he was that full circle to where, oh, you train with Madness, I train with them, and this and the other. And I remember that day of Urban Fest, he invited me to get to the show early, earlier than most people, and we rolled around in the ring, and just a, a just a mutual a mutual respect just based off the people that I, I I worked with and I that's that's the benefit of going out of your circle and working with other people because other people will notice it again uh, I've been able to work with Madness Agbar Prestige a lot of these Texas guys that uh, if you're not into Texas indie wrestling I highly recommend you do because there's a great wrestlers out here that probably won't make the WWE for X months reasons, but the great talents, the Houston Carsons, the Chris Marvels, the the Madnesses, and all these other guys that were in the indie scene, and it's great stuff. There's managers that are great. Onyx sucks, but there's other managers out there that are just great, and there's other talent that's out there that's great, and there's up and coming talent that's great that just people don't get to see because of they are stuck with the WWE product. But yeah, that was my full circle, which is one of the reasons why I am wearing the shirt because it it made me feel good him noticing me because of the people I've worked with before. See, I didn't just wear it randomly. <laughs> oh, okay. I just, there's a reason. There's a reason, reason why I do it. There's a reason there's behind a reason. the madness. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Put that in your pipe and smoke it. These are the facial expressions that make every podcast this one. <laughs> the facial expression he does when we work together and he calls for a spot and I say no. If you watch that <laughs> legacy match, he's like, he's like, Anyways, I didn't make the dagger face. <laughs> yes, you did. No, but you know, I I appreciate every chance I got a chance to uh, every chance I had to work with you, and for other chances I get a chance to work with you and any of the other new guys coming up uh, from LWA or any place else. But if you want to get better, 
either, you know, work on where you're at, you know, and let the people that, that have grown seeing you watch you get better. And then when you feel that you're ready, then leave, leave Texas and start expanding your name. That's what ACH did. He says, I'm going to move to St. Louis. He moved to St. Louis. He went out there, started uh, getting uh, recognized and uh, working with Dragon Gate, Shikara, and all these other great, great organizations, mm -hmm. just to name a few. He did the David the, the Ring trial. Yes, he did. Along with uh, Kevin Steen and a uh, uh, whole bunch of other Ring of Honor guys. They, they were all in that same session. And just, man, just to go show you, a skinny kid from Austin, the Austin, San Antonio area, and he's somebody. Like, Somebody, Ring of Honor, somebody, some, this is some organization. And again, he came learning from these guys. I actually have a funny story real quick about ACH. All right. Uh, I, was, this, this, I was wrestling him at, at uh, PWI, and I had just came back, and I was under a hood. And um, Why did you take it off? Shut up. How else is he supposed to show off? I want to take that away from him. <laughs> but um, I had the guy, I had him I had him up against the rose. Wow, wow, wow. And uh, at some point, I was supposed to, uh, he was supposed to move out of the way. Or no, I was supposed to move out of the way. I screwed up on that with him, <laughs> with me not even ducking out of the way. He did it himself. Um, I got laid out, and he was holding, um, and God rest his soul, William Payne. I was trying to prove myself to William Payne, another great, great manager who has passed on. Um, he had his cane. And he was going to jump up on the top rope. And as he was in midair, swinging underneath his leg, and the leg dropped the, the cane on top of me. It is a scary sight watching them, uh, watching ACH and seeing how high he can really get <laughs> as a cane is being stuffed, which, you know, right under his leg coming down on you, and you're like, oh, this is going to freaking hurt like hell. And it did. <laughs> but, um,. I, I hope I hope and I pray one day I get a chance to work ACH and you know maybe uh, maybe redeem myself from that one match. <laughs> uh, one thing we didn't speak about uh, how I was in white suplex and how my body how, was how the next night. He was able to do it in other lights, ladies and gentlemen. Tell people he was able <laughs> to do it. No, no. How similar the beginning of our careers. I, Again, I spoke about how I first did my first debut match on Grand Wrestling uh, MMA shorts. Here's the thing. The reason why I want to take the Mohawk away from him. My first match was with the red Mohawk. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I used Slipknot as my theme song uh, before I forget. But I rocked a red Mohawk. Same style of Mohawk. More hair because he, he has it kind of thing. I had the guy who did my hair... Did it like a white as mohawk, but I had a red mohawk for the first show I did, not knowing he, wow. he had a mohawk. I think when we shared the same bands, a theme song once, I think. Um, Probably so. Our pose, the whole po identical pose, we had an identical finish as in the floating DDT is what he used, and that was what I used in my first two matches as a finish. So if it was meant to be, it was meant to F and B because I had there was a lot of similarities, and, and, and there was a lot of similarities, and we didn't even know anything about each other. And to be honest with you, my original finish used to be a uh, a double underhook um, swinging DDT, but since uh, that since that didn't really transcend too well, Mojo told me, "Why don't you try a an impaler DDT?" which was just hooking, dropping them between my legs, boom, that was it. And I didn't think, I thought I was going to screw it up the first time I tried it, and it just stayed with me. Because just recently I started using the elbow. That's um, right. But, <laughs> yeah, if, you, can, you, you can't write this stuff. Uh, just the similarities. I, I, I was going to use the, uh, I was going to originally use the reverse, the Sting DDT, the reverse DDT. Mm -hmm. But I thought it looked clunky because I was short. So I chose the edge DDT, where he, the floating DDT. And like I said, you can't write the stuff. 
But back to the main thing, man. Uh, I don't know, what, what did you call yours? I don't think I had a name for it yet. It was just. And, and that's another thing, too. I kept the same name for my finisher uh, since my backyard days, and that's called the Poser Basher. Poser <laughs> Basher. And I'm not a poser. Like I'm, I'm the original madness who just likes to take credit for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but in all sincerity, man, like everything you've done for me, I can't repay you for what you've been able to help me with. And I, man, I, I thank you every day for helping me where I become and where I am now again. I'm just some dude in Laredo who wrestles in tights, and it's a, I'm, I'm nobody big. But the journey there has been awesome. Uh, without you helping me, without Kevin helping me, without CJ and all those guys helping me, we don't do badass matches. We don't outshine crappy promoters. And we don't do what we like doing here. He's in the mid, he's gonna splash something at me. I'm gonna read between the lines. And I can, again, don't I can't. About it. You see? The man with the plan says, don't worry about it. I can't thank you enough for everything you've done. Stop watching dirty things on that. Uh, thank uh, Madness. Thank the promoters. Thank everybody for everything you've done. Thank Preacher for allowing us to do this. Yes. The minion can go kiss my ass. Uh, Madness, Put it man. Away. Put it away. I can't thank you for enough for everything. You're not going to shake Matt? Yeah, you are. There you go. Yes. Thank you for everything, man. And I enjoy working with you. I enjoy the... Yes. The life lessons that, that you've given me, and it's, it's, it's been fun, and it's going to well, be fun. we got more matches to go, baby. We ain't done exactly, yet. and one of the things that we have, that I have to honestly say is that if it wasn't for the cooperation of Ace, whether he believed it in or not, and whether he was ready to really accept it... Um, Ace is ready. He was? Ace okay. is ready. As long as he was. But as long as... Um, you know, whether he accepted it and he truly believed in what was going to happen, he let it happen, he allowed it to happen as the boss, and I appreciate him for that, and I appreciate you for just showing dedication, showing that heart, and passing that on to the younger guys, and, uh, and I believe uh, you have an email from the Raw General Manager, so oh. if you want to read that, it's also awesome. It says, uh, what am I reading? And I quote, on, oh wait, that's something else. I do not agree with this rookie of the year, but okay. Um, but I believe that wraps up another uh, ringside chronicle. It said, the match of the year, the triple threat match, the match of the year is just me looking awesome. Or you can go with the madness versus madness and just use it this year again, because we stole the after show. Rest of the year, the minion voted for me. And I think the minions, Vote counts. I'm the superstar of the year. I controlled 2013 and 2014, baby. Tag team champion. Do you? Do you? Uh, well, she's not my manager, but pretty sexy. But Miss Kenny was on my side. Come on, like she's yeah, not. She's not all to like a lot going for I got a lot going for him. I'm a good guy. I'm a handsome guy. Match of the year. If there's a video, I know there's a video up there for me versus Madness. Awesome. I haven't seen that video. Yeah, well, he doesn't know like two flicks. Toby can get old. That's awesome. But Ringside Chronicles, I misspell it on Facebook all the time. I'm so sorry, my phone is stupid. Are you dyslexic? I'm please? a little bit dyslexic. Okay, You're all we'll dyslexic, ladies we'll, and gentlemen. We'll go with that. We're going 1230. Who cares? Don't worry about it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank the Ringside Chronicles for what they've done this year. The interviews that they do, giving Laredo a channel to get indie wrestling, to get big names on here. I expect great things in uh, 2015. Uh, maybe get a, a single madness one. Uh, Okay. Maybe we can get uh, Onyx in a steel cage match and kick his ass. Fine, we should vote on that. We should vote on that. But again, uh, Preach, I can't thank you for enough for everything you've done for me, for Gentlemen, the company. Gentlemen, uh, I want to show my appreciation to both of you. I want to thank you all very much for this very candid, uh, eye-opening interview. Lightheartedness, light absolutely. Yeah, we had fun. It was great. It was, yes. it was, we had fun. It wasn't day. so serious like some of the other interviews that you have. Yet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is the uh, Mad One Chronicles and the Madness Chronicles, the Madness Eye, whatever it's going to be called. Chronicles of Madness. The Chronicles of Madness because we're plugging his uh, future DVD. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm working with Ringside Chronicles to produce my DVD and just for the sh** giggles of it. And, and stay tuned for 2015 that we're going to have the... Uh, Dennis Cage, Ringside Chronicles. <laughs> Ooh, that's going to be that's gonna be like a 4 That's going to be a, a pipe bomb. That's a <laughs> honest boy. Honest boy. Honest boy. Anyways, 
Uh, LWA fans, uh, TWA fans, Madness fans, Mad Boon fans, thank you for clicking the link. Thank you to Ringside Chronicles. Thank you to LWA. Thank you to Ace. Thank you, Mama, for everything that she does. Uh, that's the wrong side of where the, the watch is supposed to go. It's supposed to, you don't know. Watch either. I broke, watch I broke mad. Uh, if you need an energy drink, get a Camel Hump. A camel Hump. <laughs> it tastes good. Uh, the Minion is, is signaling me out. Ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you for everything. Enjoy the rest of the shows that are coming up. I know part two of my interview is coming up soon. Enjoy this one. Enjoy the future matches. I'm just driving it on because it's pissing off the Minion. Onyx, you suck. <laughs> Miss Knievel is the best manager. Mad One is better than Bearhan. He smells like camel ass. He does. He doesn't shower. Preach is cracking up. I'm just rubbing on to see him to when they turn off the camera. I don't give a damn. The, the, the music is going to hit. I hear the Grammy music hitting. I don't give a shit. And, and, that's, and, and that's all I got to say because I, I ain't got no catchphrase. Catch that's how we cut it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. We're out.